Justin. How you What's doing? up, Adam? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good, good. Good to see you. Uh, it's yeah, been it's been quite a while since you and I have been uh, been live together. I know we haven't been on the couch together for a little while. This is great. <sighs> yeah, I mean the virtual one now. I know you have the real one at home, which I'm still. I, I got to get my order in for one of those too. <laughs> um, we'll, so, we'll, we'll meet up and and have a, a day on the couch together. It'll be fun. Which which we do have planned. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, so today is an exciting day. Uh, actually, it was yesterday. Late yesterday was was all the excitement when we announced. Um, uh, the ability to uh, integrate your app runner services with your VPCs. So uh, we announced that feature yesterday. And if you're not familiar, um, this this was a feature that was probably our most popular requested feature for AWS app runner. I and I think it's because this will enable all of those use cases that those folks couldn't use app runner because they needed to connect to some resource within a VPC of theirs, well, now they can. So I imagine so, app, the, the floodgates are opening now. With, with so, so so back up a little bit more. App Runner, we got a container, gives us a web endpoint, right? Yes. But the limitation there is was what? What exactly? Yeah, good good question. So the, specifically, this so App Runner uh, uh, enables you to run a, a web service, an API service that's publicly exposed. And the cool thing about App Runner is it builds and manages all of the infrastructure underneath. So behind the scenes, App Runner is, is building a, oh, hey, we got some, some secret lab chair friends here. I, I love this chair. It has the ability to sleep. There's like a pillow you can attach. I haven't done that yet, but maybe after this stream I will. Um, anyway, sorry. sorry. Distraction. Back. There's a <laughs> squirrel, you know. Um, <laughs> But uh, so anyway, so behind the scenes, App Runner is building a uh, a service. It's it's actually building a container. If you provide a container image, it's going to run that container image on ECS Fargate behind the scenes. We handle all the scaling based on concurrency, um, and it's all built in, fully managed. The one limitation that folks had prior to this feature being released was a, a very common scenario where you'll have a, a an API or have some sort of service that needs to talk to a database, right? You need to talk to a database or something that lives within a private network. Well, prior to this feature being released, you weren't able to do that. So if you had another, you know, if you had your database publicly exposed, which probably shouldn't be doing, right? Uh, that would be the only way you'd be able to communicate it, commit, communicate with it. Well, today that that's not a problem as now you can actually connect into your VPC and talk to those resources. So in this case, I still have my app runner service. I get the load balancer managed. I get the certificate managed. I still have that, that interaction that's publicly available for my app, but I don't have to go back out that same network interface to go talk to my database, right? Like I actually get a different ENI that I talk to that's, that's plugged into my VPC with whatever private resource they want. Like this is databases, this is other services within the VPC. If you host something else in EKS, ECS, like you have services internally that are only available on the VPC that aren't publicly available. And now this access allows my app that is sort of that front gate to something to also talk to something behind the scenes, right? Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we'll walk through it um, and we'll actually set up a service and connect it to a VPC. The way you do that is with what's called a VPC connector in the app runner service. So we'll walk through and, and show what that looks like. But you mentioned something really cool, which is the, the interface. So again, app runner is, it's a managed service. So it's running in you know, its own VPC. We have our own uh, management layer. So this connector, essentially what it's doing is it's creating an ENI. And this ENI is what's allowing you to uh, egress into your VPC. So when you when traffic comes into your API and you need to egress out to a VPC service, it's all happening over that ENI. And this uh, is actually elastic okay. net network interface, right? Like ENI, elastic network interface, essentially is just like plugging an ETH cable into a switch that is on the back of your service into whatever network is available. Right? I could have brought props. I should have. <laughs> That's exactly. You could have brought a switch and, and I know. Yeah, I, I got them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly, great great way of of putting it, Justin. So. Yeah, and and it's really simple, and so that's what we'll see as I as I set it up. That the actual experience itself is 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 very very straightforward. There's not a lot of of heavy lift that you have to do as the person building and, and managing and maintaining that service. Um, 
So before we dive into the demo, one other cool thing that I wanted to point out here was when we think about VPC support, I think oftentimes the first thing that comes to mind is I got to connect to a database, right? I have an RDS cluster. I have uh, an Elastic Cache uh, uh, cluster set up. But it's beyond that. If you have services like uh, services running an ECS and you're using service discovery, this plugs right in. So you can now, using this connection, talk to backend services that you may have running an ECS, EKS, and you can communicate over that service discovery mechanism with, with AWS Cloud Map. So it and really that comes... Yeah, go so ahead. anything inside the VPC, if I have VPC endpoints for something that is still private, right? Like, so like Cloud Map is there, but I also could have other VPC endpoints that allow me to connect to something within the VPC and not have to go outside that network, right? Like anything that's available in the VPC can be resolved from within my app now. Yep, exactly. And that's huge, right? Because you you get to... You know, I don't mean I don't mean to be cheesy because we say it a lot, but you really do get to use the, the right tool for, for the job here. If App Runner is the right tool to expose your API publicly, uh, it's because you don't have to manage all of the underlying infrastructure. Why not? And now that you can connect to other resources that you may have privately exposed within a VPC, it's like peanut butter and jelly. They go nicely together. Um, so, and, and, and I like that, like this expands app runner from the simple self-contained application that's, you know, you had to do some extra security. If you wanted to say call Lambda, you could still do some of that stuff, but you're going outside the, that network. You're going outside the main Nick to get to it. And now you can make a few more, you know, advanced applications with app runner because you have access to all, everything else that's available in the VPC, all your other services, anything else you want to host and do privately, uh, or not. Not every one of your services, if you ever build something semi-complex, uh, the amount of things that are publicly exposed and privately exposed or, or not exposed, like that's the, a big difference there of just like, hey, these are all support services. This is the back end. We don't expose that publicly on the internet. And so this is allowing you to connect to those things. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's let's just go right into it. Let, let's We'll take a look at my, you know, my demo. It's a, it's a very simple demo that I've built. And what I'm going to show you is basically how we can build an app runner service. Uh, we'll point to a container image and uh, we're going to just deploy it. We're going to deploy it with the VPC connector and just, you know, go from there. I saw a question here from Carlos about latency affected for app runner instance to attach the private VPC. I think that that's actually interesting because in this case, as you have a instance deployed, you're going to get the ENI the first right when it's deployed, but on that scale up, you do have to connect to the ENIs to each instance, right? Like, so each one is its own behind the scenes Fargate task. And, and I have to connect an ENI that goes into the VPC. So there might be some additional setup for that. I don't actually know how that's handled behind the scenes, um, but but it is something to be concerned about. Like maybe if like, if you need to scale up quickly, you might need to set your minimum threshold or your, your uh, what's the term? I don't forget what app runner term is for parallel, the amount of connections, concurrent connections. Concurrency. Um, yep. Yeah. Concurrency. You might need to level that up as well to make sure that you can handle the right amount of traffic before you scale up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's just understanding, you know, how much time you need, what the scaling patterns are. Of course, image size, there are some other factors that come into play there as well. Right. And, and, and that's, uh, Carlos points out too, like that's a big difference between the app runner model versus the Lambda model where Lambda is, one request per Lambda function and an app runner that stays around. Like if you have that consistent container that's running and you don't need to connect the ENI every time you get a request, whenever the concurrency happens, that's when you actually need to new instance, connect the ENI and scale up that way. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, just to, and yeah, it's that scaling model. There's actually a great blog that Nathan Peck wrote, which I'm going to find and, and post in here where he actually compares the Lambda concurrency model to app runner concurrency model to running it yourself on ECS Fargate and, and how the scaling model uh, models differ. I can find it. I, I read that one. It was good. It was uh, a good article. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to hear me type. Um, the other question here uh, from Chol Meng. Uh, sure. Uh, talking about DNS propagation. Uh, I'm assuming that we're using the DNS resolvers inside of the VPC. And so anything that's what Cloud Map is also sending its DNS into. So you can resolve some of those endpoints with DNS. Uh, but the Fargate tasks by default use this 
the DNS resolver in the VPC. I'm assuming that's still the case here. Yeah, and that, that's how you're able to communicate with services that are behind Cloud Map uh, because of that. So it, it's not just um, uh, you know like public resources or public endpoints that you can connect to. You can connect to anything you have defined within that VPC uh, DNS wise as well. Um, so let's go into it. And so Carlos mentions all fair game, including security groups. So I'm not sure what you mean by that, but what I will say is you do set up a, a security group. When we create the VPC connector, we're actually going to define the security group uh, that we want to allow. So, um, and based on that security group, that's where we allow the, the inbound and outbound connection, um, uh, resources. So, oh yeah, there's that blog. Perfect. Yeah. That's in chat now. So people can read that, uh, cause that concurrency does matter, uh, depending on how fast you need to scale, what type of services you're running, that sort of stuff uh, matters a lot. So Nate did a great job, uh, putting that out there. It, do, so do we want to switch into the screen? Yeah, let, let's now? jump into the demo. Cause that is, uh, we're, Plenty of great questions uh, so far. We also want to show some of this because it might answer some of those questions. Uh, so yes, and so so by the way, keep the questions coming. Thank you. Like we're we're here to talk about it. And if we can't, if we don't have an answer, we'll find one, uh, and we'll 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 get back. Yeah, Nathan Peck is awesome. I, I, it's definitely a privilege to work with him. He's phenomenal. Um, okay, so I have uh, so in this demo, I have a I've created an environment. I have an ECS cluster running right now. I have a, a, a service that's running behind a load balancer um, and I have an Aurora database cluster. So RDS, um, I have a cluster running. And so forgive me, my computer is, is really at full capacity right now. So I may start cutting in and out, who knows? Um, and so in my, uh, so I have a VPC, uh, I have everything running inside of the, the private subnets. My Aurora cluster is in a private subnet uh, or is it, uh, spans across private subnets and my ECS service is in a private subnet. So all I want to do is just show you that I can connect to a load balancer with ECS and I can connect to this database. Um, Blow that up that a service. little bit. Thank you. Yes, we'll do. So let's, let's do some zoomage, get it nice and uncomfortably uh, large there. There we go. Okay. So, I have this load balancer, okay? And just to show you, here, here's the demo app. So all I'm doing in my app is I'm just talking to the backend database on the port just to ensure that I can connect. So you can see here uh, with my ECS service, so I have a, an ECS service, a task definition, a cluster, um, a load balancer, target groups. I've built all of that. Now, let's build this in App Runner, the same model, <laughs> it's calling you out. <laughs> oh, I, I, the day I got caught on the net cat trick. I'm sorry. I just did not want to model a database and uh, and, and build tables. And it, you caught me. This is definitely a cheap, uh, a cheap way of going. Carlos so, knows what's up. <laughs> thank you for keeping me honest, Carlos. I, I appreciate that. Um, okay. So we're going to go into the uh, AWS App Runner console here. So, and the view looks pretty good. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's the, the VPC connector. So this VPC connector is what's going to enable that bridge between my app runner service and my VPC. Now I could go here and I could create one, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start at the service creation screen, and then we're gonna actually create the VPC connector as we create our service. Um, so if you're not familiar with app runner and the deployment models and the ways that you can actually just, you build and run your, your service, there's, there's basically two options. The first option is I don't need a container image. If I don't want to deal with containers, I don't ever want to look at them or, or look at a Docker image. You don't have to. You can literally tell uh, App Runner, here's my repository. And then you a couple in like a like what's like a, a build spec type YAML file, you basically define here's how I build and here's how I run my application. That's it. And we support uh, at the at the moment. I believe it's two languages. Justin, is it is it Python Note, and, and Node? Node and Python, uh, Node Python. Are, are the two that I remember. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I have not built one from scratch for a little while now. <laughs> like I, I had the uh, the demos that we were doing for a while, and and so yeah, like we still have plans for 
some other ones that are going to be great to like give you the entire, here's my source code. Every time I commit, just go ahead and build that container and deploy it. Like that workflow is what essentially a lot of people are building internally, right? Like that's just like, we can do that side of it for you. If you want to just connect that repo directly, if it lives on GitHub, uh, but you know, bring your own container is another option. I'm just like, we don't care how the container got here. We can run it. Yes. And, and so, you know, with that, uh, it, there's always, now I have my code, but how do I deploy it? So App Runner will also build behind the scenes the CI CD workflow. And it actually will, uh, the deployment model is a blue green deployment. So it will, the second you push an update to your source code to the branch that you've said, here's my, my branch that I'm deploying from. Once you push uh, to that, you commit to that branch, it's going to trigger the build. It's going to deploy health check blue green, flip the switch. So that's pretty cool too, because you don't need a team to help you build or you don't need to build the CI CD pipelines yourself. It's all built in. I know you love Jenkins, but sometimes, you know, <laughs> hosted Jenkins might just be better. <laughs> exactly. Like, look, I love it. I love all CI CD tools, but if I can avoid touching them, that's the preference. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll call it like that. Uh, okay. So I have this, this image here, my net cat image, Carlos, you caught me. I was trying to be sneaky. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to point to the image that I want to deploy from. So I'm choosing ECR public with ECR public. You can't trigger automatic deployments, but if I were to choose a private registry, I could uh, trigger automatic deployments for every time I push uh, to this, you know, this particular uh, image. So let's go back. There we go. So there's my image. This is all I'm doing. I'm saying, here's the container image I want to deploy. That's it. So let's name this app runner VPC CFTC demo. I'm going to keep all the defaults the same. There is an environment variable that I need. So my code is quite advanced. I don't hard code <laughs> database names in there. I use environment variables. Cloud native. Cloud native. Thank you, Justin. Um, I'm sure Carlos would, would think that's pretty cool. I hope. Uh, I'm just, I'm kidding. So, okay. So my target is going to be the host name of the uh, RDS instance. And then I, oops, yep. And then I just need, I think it's target. You know what? I'm gonna have to look at my code. I don't want to, I don't want to do this wrong. So if I go to my uh, main pot, it's target port. I didn't put an underscore. I should have put an underscore. Doesn't your gut tell you you should have an <laughs> underscore there? Okay, so 5432, can anyone guess what type of database it is? I'm waiting, and, for, I'm waiting for a comment. We're going to get a winner here. <laughs> Come on, 5432, a winner. Um, I'm going to leave port 8080. So that's the default. I'm exposing my service on port 8080. And like I said, I'm not touching anything else uh, with the app. There is the networking configuration. So this is where we can set up the VPC connector. Um, or just connect to an existing VPC connector that we already have running. So I don't have any right now. So let's create. It is Aurora. That's good. But what's the engine? There's specifics there. Yeah, 5432. I, I can't forget that port. I don't know. Like I just I spent too much time with Postgres. I mean. Too much time. I, I, you know, <laughs> being up at, at 2 a.m. trying to troubleshoot and, and this particular there's, database engine. There it is. There's the Postgres. There it is. That's what we wanted. You both win the call outs. On yes. The show. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, okay. So I'm just going to say VPC demo CFTC. Okay. So now I get to choose my VPC. So I have this VPC already created. I'm going to choose my subnets. Uh, what I'd like to do here is I'd like to only run connect to my private subnets. So let's do that. My browser is on the verge here. Oh man, you, you lagged bad when that was loading. That was fun. You were just like, man, st stuck. <laughs> Lots of cycles going on right now. Um, so we're going to go to subnets and hope this doesn't explode. There we go. And I'm just going to type private. Ow, so delayed. Okay. So let me just make sure. Yep. These are my private subnets. So I just, I'm going to grab these. So let's go back to, where'd you go app runner? I lost you. Okay. So I'm going to connect to all my private subnets. So that's four, five, D and what was that other one? Five. Here's my well, other one. While you select that, I'm going to pull in this question from Carlos about Secrets Manager. Um, app runner doesn't have any specific integration with Secrets Manager. That would be at the gotcha. security group level. So your, your container, your application and app runner 
uh, against the security group, you allow it to call secrets manager. And then that's in application code that you would be integrating calling some of that, unless there's something else I'm missing because you, you did this to me. It, so, <laughs> but this is where the IAM role would, would come into play right. too, right? So you can attach an IAM role to your app runner service. I said security group. I meant I am. Yeah, that's the... Okay. That, Wrong okay. permission boundary that I said. Yeah, no, I, just I so am focused on VPC right now. I, yeah, I was reading it. And so, yeah, the, the I am role that you have. So your SDK, you call out and get secrets, uh, but that's handled. I, I am to allow you to call for that. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So I am going to connect to, I, let's see. Shoot. I don't even remember which one it is, uh, but you could pick multiple security groups. So that's the other cool thing is you can have multiple security groups defined, um, in your configuration here. Uh, but you know, I do, I'm just curious. I, this is the OCD in me. I got to do it right the first time. Uh, I'm, I basically created a security group that allows for ingress on 5432 for any resource that has that security group attached to it. So that's the one I want to use. Let's just see. I think this looks like the one. Yes. 18. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to attach them all because we're doing a demo. I don't want to break it. Okay. So, so that's all I needed to do. Uh, one thing to note on the security group is your egress, your, your outbound rules are very important here because um, this security group is what going to uh, be attached to your app runner resource. And it's going to allow or not allow uh, based on the outbound rules, what resources you can connect to in the VPC, because all that traffic is egressing into your VPC. So just important to know, like with these security groups right now, I have them defaulting to all outbound. A uh, uh, question from, from Vlad about, uh, can you have multiple VC, VPC connectors? I, I don't know that you can per app, uh, but I could be wrong. Yeah. It's, so it's just one per one, app, yeah. one per service. Um, but you can have multiple services and multiple VPC connectors. Like you can have multiple VPC connectors. Right. But essentially you get one ENI connected to one VPC on the back end of your service. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we have, we've created our VPC connector. Um, we have our service. Let's just get it deployed because this will take anywhere between like three and five minutes. So let's do that. And by the way, you know, we were talking about auto scaling earlier. This is your auto scaling configuration. You can see our concurrency uh, threshold is 100 and we want, we can basically scale out to 25 max and scale down to one minimum. So let's create and deploy. And like I said, this is going to take a few minutes now, you know, behind the scenes app runner is, is creating the, uh, you know, the Fargate task with the, all the, the task definition, everything behind the scenes, it's, it's setting up all of the integrations. Um, so usually the first time deploy is that's why it's three to five minutes because there's so much being built for that first time. Not so much, but it's building quite a bit. Uh, but then, you know, your deploys after are much faster because obviously it's not building brand new resources um, for those deployments. So this will take a few minutes. Uh, uh, are there any other questions or anything? The VPC connector, well, I have an app now. Does that increase my cost for this application in AppRunner? Yeah, so let's let's look at the AppRunner pricing page. Let me, let me Google that so we can show uh, what the, the pricing is there. I prefer to, I'm frozen, I'm back. You're, you're coming and going <laughs> every time you load a page. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's it's loading up here. Um, but it's anything you want to see with, with pricing here, um, like for, for build, uh, for all your builds, um, the CICD, what that costs. Um, and then if you are using, I'm going to wait for that to stop. If you're using, uh, you're not supplying your own container image and you're using the build service, that's, uh, in, that, that has a cost as well. Um, and I believe the VPC, the, the pricing is just based on, the pricing will be your egress pricing. And, and if you have NAT gateways in your VPC, everything for, from that perspective, you're paying your VPC related costs. Um, right. Yeah. The, yeah. the connector itself, the ENI to your service is free, but the, if you do have additional, if you're sending a bunch of traffic between 
uh, subnets on that VPC or with a NAT, ga NAT gateway, those standard charges within that VPC still apply. So this isn't a like free traffic, but it is free ENI to the uh, to the actual application, or at least no additional cost based on this usage. Yeah. So let's see. So while it's built, let me go back to there. And and, and by the way, I saw a comment. Uh, it's not my internet speed. My internet speed's fantastic. It's just I, I have I'm I'm chaining my video through like four different services running, so they're just chewing up CPU and and, and GPU. So and then Chrome itself. Um. So there were a lot of a lot of good questions here. Uh, let's see. There was one I thought I saw I wanted to touch on. Maybe it was just that. Integration there. I am. Yeah. I, so Th this is an interesting uh, call from Carlos. Of like, if you wanted an app runner application to talk to two different uh, things, like you could chain app runner could call, but it's calling a public endpoint at that point because your app runner isn't exposed on the VPC. It's exposed still publicly. So you'd be going from public endpoint to public endpoint to VPC. Um, but that first app could go to another VPC. Uh, I don't know if I would recommend that model, uh, but that would be a, an interesting thing if you needed to have something. So like your front app shows app one uh, and that might call app two and a different VPC. But yeah, straddling that sort of thing, uh, you might just want to go straight to EC2 uh, with Fargate's uh, using, or you know, ECS with Fargate using Copilot or something because you'd have a lot more flexibility on that once you own some more of that configuration, once you're not using fully managed service, you're using managed services that expose a little more configuration to you. Uh, that would be something else that would allow you to have some more of that flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. And as I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm going to close some windows just because it's kind of madness the, right now. And Vlad also asked about VPC peering. Uh, and this would actually work within, because you have access within the VPC. So any routes, any route tables you have within that VPC absolutely would work. Yeah. And, and so that, that was one, one other call out I forgot to mention is, yeah, if you have a direct connect in your data center, you can, you, your app runner service can talk all the way back to your data center over direct connect. So uh, the options are, are, are there and definitely with the multiple VPC connector use case, Carlos, I would say. I'd like to hear more about the use case and maybe what problems you're trying to solve because you it, you know if you have one VPC you're connecting to multiple you know generally there maybe there's like some sort of transitive VPC setup uh, you know virtual gate uh, oh that's not is it virtual gateway no that's not the the service transit gateway transit you know gateway. you have multiple VPCs um, and you know oftentimes it's that hub and spoke model so it just always depends but this is where those security groups can come in too so. I can add my one VPC connector and I can define the security group rules for egress where I can talk. And that's how I can kind of control that network communication. Uh, question here from, from Geronimo about like use cases. Again, we, we mentioned this a little bit early on of like app runner versus uh, ECS with Fargates. Um, you want to talk about that a little more? Yeah, that's, I love that question. Um, so app runner is, is very specific in, in the use case because if, if you're using app runner you're you it's a publicly exposed api or web service so if if your app is going to be publicly exposed that's you check the one box okay app runner may make sense for you if concurrency is a metric that you want to use as scaling in and out app runner again makes a lot of sense and in addition it's fully managed fully managed to the point where you're not building pipelines you don't you don't ever look at the pipeline you don't look at the infrastructure running to scale your tasks in and out. That's all managed for you. So if you just want to get your code up and running quickly with all of these bells and whistles built in, AppRunner can support that use case. Now, once you start to grow outside of that, now with VPC connector, again, if you have that public uh, facing what API service you want to run with VPC connector, now you can integrate with other internal VPC resources that you may have. And, this is where, so app runner, you can't run private services right now. So I can't deploy a container running in a private subnet on AWS app runner today. It is, it is on the roadmap. There, there's a lot of, uh, talk and, 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 you know, uh, a lot of folks, you know, asking for that. So that's something we're looking into. So that's where maybe something like ECS Fargate would make sense. Now where 
you know, you don't, you, you don't have the ability to run this in the private subnet like you'd want. So you use something like ECS Fargate to, to help solve that problem. My service is up and running and the, the, oh, I broke it. <laughs> My service is broken. Let's look at the logs and see. Um, and, and by the way, you can see my demo. Okay. Let's see. Oh, so you can see here, here's my command again. It's running a netcat. US East two. Oh, 8080. That's Isn't why. that what you left? I, that I, I, I thought I set. I thought you had 8080. Uh, no, but I need 5432 for the target port. So where's that? Where's that? Where's that banner? There it is. Doing it live. <laughs> let's go back. Yes. I love this. So uh, by the way, again, app runner just did one of these highlights that, to talk about is it had the application logs are built in for, to troubleshoot my app. I was able to instantly drill down. See in the application logs, here's my problem. Here's where I went wrong. So again, it's trying to connect on port 8080, which is not correct. Do you have so, a different environment variable. I think there, there's definitely a problem. You, you can you can troubleshoot that. I also sent a, a chat here for the roadmap itself because uh, App Runner is on is on the main uh, containers roadmap that we have on GitHub. Uh, so there's a short URL for it. If anyone's interested, you can filter in that uh, roadmap for App Runner coming soon. Add a add a plus one thumbs up for you know issues that uh, are looking good to you and that you'd like to see or comments for use cases. We love hearing that feedback. Yeah, absolutely, and. No joke, that, that roadmap is there for, for folks to come in, chime in, tell us what you want, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see. Uh, the, the, P, the product managers, the DAs, we're all reviewing that um, uh, quite a, uh, pretty consistently. Okay, so my, my environment variable was wrong. I was so fixated on having that underscore that I put it in there, which was not how I coded it. So hey, my brain works differently on different days. Like sometimes it wants to do things one way and sometimes the other. We so all miss I'm underscores. Gonna, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna save changes, and now it's going to redeploy my service. So, um, if we go down now, this should be much quicker. Again, what it's doing behind the scenes is it's taking the latest configuration, deploying it side by side, health checking the new uh, version of my my service, and then once it's healthy, it's gonna flip the switch, blue green style. Again, sorry for all the choppiness. I will resolve that one of these days. I feel like Justin. It was always you that had I, the choppy. I, I'm not saying anything. I'm not. I'm not jumping into that. <laughs> and now it's me. I, I did simplify my setup a lot. I, I have a streaming Windows machine now, and it's an HDMI capture card, and I don't have OBS. I don't have anything else in the mix. I lose flexibility. Like there's always a trade-offs of like it, any service, any configuration on my computer. How much? customization and configuration do I want versus how much do I just want it to work? <laughs> and, and app runner in a lot of cases is the same, right? Like it's just say, Hey, you know what? I have a container. This is going to work for me. I expose an endpoint, And, and in this case, you know, we're talking to a VPC endpoint, uh, but I don't need OBS. I don't need uh, multi VPC. I don't need peering. I don't need everything else. It's just, it's going to work for us. Yeah. Look, look how I tied that in right there. It's yep. streaming and cloud infrastructure. That was well done, Justin. That was that was a really nice connection there. So let me see. Maybe I close. You're still frozen, by the way. <laughs> but you can hear me, right? I hear you just fine. Okay. So that's all that matters. You can just we, we can stare at frozen Adam until until you know I decide to come back. Um <laughs> all right, so our deployment is happening. And again, so so this is the best part about doing it live is we run into issues, we get to troubleshoot them live and and, and work through them. So, and it's still honestly like I I love doing the troubleshooting. It's always it's always a little nerve wracking that you're going to fix or not. But constantly we hear from everyone that's watching like troubleshooting is one of the best things people like seeing. So if you have other things you like seeing on the show or ideas, uh, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, there's there's Adams. Uh, Twitter, real Adam, and, and I'm well. I, I can't point now, but there I am. So, uh, you know, let us know if there's other shows and things you topics you like seeing on the show. Yeah. So, okay. So now our service is deployed. Will it work? Let's find out. And it works. Okay. Yeah, blow that up. It's just a little string. There you go. 
Sweet. So there we are. So let's walk through what I did again, just to, just to really make it clear. Now, obviously, again, this is a very simple application, right? But the idea is I need to communicate with a database, uh, an RDS cluster, okay, running Postgres inside my VPC. We created an app runner service the, off of a container image. Our code connects to that backend database. Hey, remember you were talking about that? The earbud, ear, ear, AirPods falling out? I told you, yeah. Um, and then we deployed that service. But before we deployed it, we created a VPC connector. We defined the security groups, the VPC, and the subnets that we wanted to connect into. And that was it. We deployed it. I made a mistake with one of my environment variables, fixed it, triggered a new deployment. And here we are. The, the functionality works exactly as we expect. So, Carlos, I mean, tomato, tomato. This is, it's, it's, it's. A... <laughs> so, hang on. It's, it, it, this is, it, yeah, it is a fast API. Okay. This is an API service. It's running in Python. And, uh, it, it's, I just have a lot of Python wrapped around the bash. So, but it's not a bash script. I, I, I won't say that. Hey, look who's here. <laughs> hey, Brent. Good to see you. Hey, he needs to update his background image. He has bricks behind him. It should be a, a wood wall. That's uh... that's true. That's that's, that's... <laughs> and uh, again, Brent. The 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 wood wall inspiration comes from Brent's actual wood wall in his house when he uh, when he used to be on the show with us in the good old days. Um, so that's really it. You know, uh, one thing I'm going to be doing over the course of the next uh, few days is I'm going to build a demo. And what I did here, I'm going to build this uh, and I'm going to actually uh, push it to a, Git, a GitHub repository so folks can come and just kind of walk through it and deploy a test environment. But also I'm going to build a, a service running in an ECS cluster, a private service that we're going to have the app runner service talk to privately on the back end. So just more ways to, to see how that communication works and work through that. So keep an eye out for that in the future. But otherwise, that's really it. Um, there's nothing else to, to share outside of that. So if there's any other questions or Justin, anything you want to touch on? I was going to send also, uh, we do have the, the, the launch example app still up. Uh, so people are still just trying to get used to app runner, see what it looks like. Um, this example app deploys, go, it, it deploys a container. There's a pre-built container available. So you can just go and plug in the pre-built container. Uh, or there's also inside of the repo, we have examples for running it in bash so you can just like create an app um and i believe there's also uh if there was there's cloud formation and i thought we had cdk but i don't think cdk made it into this one uh there's a cloud formation template too so you can deploy it a couple different ways and just see what app runner was like and in this case we we have a python you know api, API web app that creates a unique image for you that when you share it on Twitter, it shows you what the image is and it writes a file to disk. So there's these little things that we wanted to show off in app runner that have benefits of like, Hey, if I wanted to do this in a Fargate task or in a Lambda, how would I do that? And in some cases you get some of that scratch space. Sometimes if it was like a, a Fargate and you're doing this per execution, it'd be generate new images each time, or you'd have to fetch that from S3 or something. So in this case, we want to show concurrency was available. There was a couple of things that AppRunner gives you that's just like, hey, you can you can deploy this today. It's an app that, that exists. This one doesn't have VPC endpoint support or connecting to a database. It was very simple for the reason of just showing off how to actually launch it. Uh, but in you know in Adam's case, once he has a little more you know another demo, you'll see how you're calling out over an ENI. You don't have to like specify like ETH two or something like that. It's just like, hey, give me that endpoint that was in my environment variable and and let's connect to it and security groups there. You can connect to those databases, anything inside that VPC, private endpoints that make it so that your app can actually be more full featured with other things you're running. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And um, there's also apprunnerworkshop.com. Uh, and we will be enhancing that to add VPC support so folks can run through that. Uh, but in the meantime, as you know, Justin mentioned, if you want to reach out to us, you have questions, you just, you know, that the great question of, of, you know, when do I choose app runner versus ECS or versus this, you know, how do I choose a service? Things like that. We're available to chat about that anytime on, on the Twitters and <laughs> Point uh, bad, bad pointing. I'm like half off the screen. So anyway, that's it. Thank you everybody so much for joining. Um, 
if, if there's anything else, any other questions, you know, shoot us a note and uh, we will, we'll see you the next time. I, I believe I have a show next week. Um, I think next week is the AWS cookbook. Uh, AWS cookbook was a book that came out uh, written by some of our essays. We're going to show off a couple of recipes in that. So uh, come join for next week. Um, I need to create that stream so people can come to it. Uh, but that's going to be fun because it's actually a whole book dedicated. to just like, I have something I want to do. What service should I do it in? And, and how do I accomplish that task? So it's very recipe driven. That's why it's a cookbook. Uh, and we're going to dive into that a little bit more. Um, just kind of the, what services are covered. So if you're interested in learning more of a broad array of AWS services, uh, I, I was a reviewer for the book and I highly recommend it. So there's a lot of good content, uh, but we'll be doing that next week on the show. Uh, and then just reach out, let us know what else you want to see. Yeah. And um, you know, it's it, now you mentioned that check out that show. Also, we're going to be start we're starting to develop more content for containers from the couch so keep your eye on the channel we're going to have some really cool series coming up we're going to start building some uh you know like a learner series where we're going to be very kind of fundamental uh, approach where we walk through some fundamental concepts of containers uh, on aws as well as um, a builder series where we're actually going to bring folks on we're going to talk about how they're building on our services talk about why they made certain architectural choices uh, and so on so real world examples all that good stuff. So definitely keep an eye out. Those will be coming soon. All right, cool. Well, thanks everyone for joining and I hope you like it. Let us know what you build with uh, AppRunner and VPC support. Thanks everyone.